So today I want to show you the next phase of switch modification. Uh, now that we in modified the internals of the switch, we need to get rid of those two uh, in order to custom mount the switch into the engine. So let's see how we're going to do it. Okay, so this is the first phase, now let's move to the second phase. Now if we want to make this a version for V engines, we also need to modify a one by one piece. This piece need to be, needs to be by thinner by about a third and we need to get rid of the stud. So the easiest way to do it is with a grind wheel. Okay, so that's done. Now let's return to the shop and do some sanding. Okay, so now that we reduced the parts to the required size, we need to sand them down to make them look prettier. Come on, focus. Okay. This looks about right. Uh, I'm using 320 grit sandpaper for the coarse process. Now we use uh, 1200 grit sandpaper for the fine process. Well, there we go. Come on. Yeah, this is good enough. Okay, so let's repeat the process with the switch. Nice and smooth. Okay, let's see what we can do now with the gluing. 
Okay, so the goal is to have the switch mounted between the uh, beams. Yeah, I thought those are lift arms. No, those are Lego Technic beams. Yeah. Uh, well, how do we do that? Uh, usually, we do this with the old style uh, switches. But as you can see here, the reason why I do not use the old style switches is because the plastic is very brittle and what tends to happen is that the inlets tend to break off or they become become cracked and then they leak. So those are pretty much useless and they're becoming uh, rare. So I prefer to modify the new switches. Uh, what we do, we glue this brick in the front and we glue this part that we modified here on the bottom. Let me show you how to do it. So for this I developed a nice tool and we are going to modify the switch. So what I do here is I apply glue on this part like so put the brick on the tool and then I simply offer up the switch to the brick. The super glue usually sticks immediately and now basically all we have to do is wait until it dries and then we glue on the small part. Uh, for this what I do is I apply glue to the unmodified, to the, come on, to the unsanded part uh, to maximize the surface area. And I also make, made another tool because we need a reference point. Uh, since we sand down the bottom of the, come on, keep in focus, the bottom of the switch, the bottom of the switch is no longer a relevant uh, point of reference. So what I do is I put this on. There we go. And now our point, point of reference is this. So the modified part gets glued right up to it. And you can see here in the bottom Come on, uh, it's not quite flush with the bottom of the switch. So let's glue it and see what happens. It's better to apply the glue to the switch itself. Okay, and this is the part where I get my fingers sticky with super glue. Ah, uh, come on. I love this part. Okay. Now we remove the tool and we have our modified switch. Of course, this is the, ver the modified version for the V engines. If you want uh, versions for other kinds of, kinds of engines, you can of course glue different kind of bricks on it. Uh, I often experiment with different attachment points. It all depends on the purpose and the application. So thanks to the power of video, this is now dry.
and of course we stick it onto the studs and we lock it in place there we go so now we have our perfect switch mount you can see it's perfectly flush in all planes it cannot move and it's very compact if only the camera would focus come on There we go. Never mind the small gap here. This this just means that uh, the small piece is slightly smaller uh, than necessary, but it's better that than it's smaller than it, as if it were, were too big. Because if if it was too big, this would create tension here. So make it smaller rather than larger so this is it for this episode I hope this will enable you to make your own switch modifications in the future and I see you next time